Brian, this is the worst bit of product placement I've ever seen in my life behind you. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just start off with how you actually sell this car, first of all, not in China, but globally, because no Chinese EV maker, or indeed car maker, generally speaking, has been successful in any major economy outside of China. Well, I think first of all, you know, we have to be successful in China first. Um, you know, as a leading smart EV maker, we actually have been producing exciting, cool, and technologically advanced products, and the Chinese customer enjoys. So we have to build that as the foundation. And with the product uh, and the technology, we believe we offer something very attractive to the global customers as well. Uh, so that's why we started the effort uh, internationally in Europe first with uh, uh, the four northern countries and uh, with uh, uh, the lineup that we kind of introduce in the next year or two. Uh, we believe we have the ability to start a footprint there. But I think there's patience required to develop an uh, auto business uh, outside of China. And, uh, you know, the... Um, the, um, I think the, 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 the prospect of uh, Chinese products, you know, launching these markets is actually quite attractive because if you actually go to uh, Europe right now, you can see actually the Chinese small EV product actually compares very favorably to what's offered in those markets. So we have the confidence that we can produce something very competitive there. You mentioned about patience. Can you kind of tell us about the G9 and how it actually fits into your exports globally now? Well, G9, first of all, is positioned as our premium full-size SUV uh, that was, the, uh, I would say, the, uh, the, the most advanced technologies in a number of areas. Uh, first of all, it will have the smartest architecture for intelligent driving, uh, the, what we call the full scenario ADAS function, utilizing our hardware and also the leading software stack. So, uh, secondly, is that the, uh, the car is one of the fastest charging EVs uh, in the market today uh, with its 800 volt uh, high voltage platform coupled with uh, fast charging uh, sort of uh, uh, guns. And then also uh, the car itself, you can see that both a number of very attractive interior, exterior sort of features. So we think it will be a very popular product in uh, uh, countries, in, for example, in Europe that appreciates large uh, uh, SUVs that has off off-road capabilities, as well as uh, the uh, uh, the premium uh, range that actually can be uh, um, enjoyed in those countries. Brian, David here. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that? The, the this advanced driver assistance system. So, I mean, put that to us in simple English. What can this car do self-driving wise that wasn't available in your previous models, and, so, and what's also available in the market? Compare that to right. So uh, first of all, you know, we actually announced uh, the official launch of our city NGP capability in our existing product early this week. That capability is a major step ahead in the uh, sort of uh, uh, what we call the high uh, degree ADAS function. That allows you to actually navigate in busy streets in urban driving in China, for example, in Guangzhou, uh, uh, using the cars uh, sort of uh, uh, architecture. And that is, uh, um, you know, a step you know, sort of uh, uh, forward you know, compared to last year when we launched similar capabilities only focused on highway scenarios. So with this city NGP launched in our existing product, uh, we actually completed what we call the full scenario sort of uh, setup. So we had the highway NGP capability, the city NGP capability, and the valid parking assist. So combine those three together, the G9 uh, next year, we hope to deliver what we call the full scenario NGP, the so XNGP. Uh, and Brian, maybe just talk us through what your strategy is in, in Europe right now. I mean, you're, you're, you're poised to enter more countries. Uh, what is the strategy as, as you continue on? And what sort of aspects of the vehicles do you think can actually help generate decent sales there? Well, first of all, I think uh, we started in four countries in Europe today, uh, Norway, Denmark, uh, Sweden, and the Netherlands. And uh, we are intending to launch uh, the, for example, the G9 as well as uh, the international version of our P7 to these markets. Um, I think uh, these are, you know, what we call the premium products we think can establish our brand as well as our technological sort of uh, positions in these markets. But, you know, with, you know, sort of the, the, the 
the, the, uh, the, the presence. We also hope to expand our coverage with our own you know, stores as well as our partners and agent stores to cover more areas. Um, um, we actually have plans to also to rule out a smaller format as well as a lower price range uh, products to, uh, to cover the wider European continent. So these are you know, sort of the methodical plans that we have sort of in place to tackle this market. Brian, uh, right. Tesla says they're going to be, uh, you know, enabling uh, non-Tesla vehicles to use their supercharging network. How does that affect you? Well, first of all, um, the supercharging, super fast charging capability of our vehicle that can be used in both our own proprietary um, uh, charging stations as well as public or third party charging stations. Obviously, our proprietary charging station will have the the fastest charging capability because we use 480 kilowatt uh, guns uh, that can maximize the charging speed. But even with uh, the G9, the 800 uh, volt cap uh, platform charging in a third party charge station still will be much faster than what you know, the comparable product can be charged today. So this actually capability can be used uh, across uh, charging uh, uh, stations and charging platforms. Uh, Brian, just to China here as a final question, you know, relative to where your initial expectations were at the start of the year in terms of deliveries in China, where are you right now relative to that? And because of the slowdown that's priced for next year, are you also having to adjust your targets for 2023? Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, this year we have faced a number of challenges uh, as a company, as also as the industry and economy. Uh, so we are constantly adjusting our goals. But I think uh, with the launch of G9, we're very excited about the prospect of generating you know, growth that we have seen in the past year or two. Uh, I think uh, this market uh, requires new product and technology to push forward uh, the, uh, the, the brand as well as sales momentum. And we're very uh, hopeful G9 will start our super product cycle because with G9, we start launching you know, new products in the next few quarters, probably at least one product per quarter. And that is gonna you know, be the sort of main catalyst for our new growth.